Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless the Lord on this morning. Glory to God. He's a wonderful Savior. And we thank him on today. We bless his name. Glory to your name, God. We thank you, God. Thank we bless you, God. you. We bless you. We bless you. Hallelujah. 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 And your presence. Open up your mouth and begin to bless the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. You're so worthy. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we bless your name. God, we magnify your name. God, we glorify your name. You alone are worthy, God. You alone are worthy, Father. You're worthy of all the glory. You're worthy of all the honor. You're worthy of the praise. God, we thank you. We give you glory. 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 Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. 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 God, we thank you. And we bless your name. We thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. God, we thank you for coming into your presence one more time. God, we thank you for saving the hand of death. God, we thank you for keeping us all week long. And we give you glory. And we give you glory. We give you glory, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. God, we thank you for everything you're doing, you've done, and you're going to do in the lives of your people. God, heal, deliver, and set free on today. God, we thank you. Oh, God, for they said if you had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't even thank you enough, God. But today, we just want to give you thanks, God. And we want to give you praise because you've been so good. In spite of everything that's going on around us, everything that we're dealing with, everything that we're going through, God, you are yet still an awesome God. Ah, God, we reverence your name on today. Lord, move like never before in this service. God, bless the speaker on today, God. Bless our leader, our shepherd, our pastor, God. In the name of Jesus, bless our first lady, God. God, bless the family, God. Bless what's Irving as a whole, God. Oh, God, bless the bodies of believers, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. God, we thank you. Ah, God, we thank you for the ways that you've made, the doors that you've opened, the doors that you've closed, God. We thank you, God. Oh, God, and we bless your name. God, go with us as we go in the furtherance of this service. He will deliver and set free. Now let the words in my mouth and the meditations in my heart be acceptable in my sight. You are my God, my strength, and my redeemer. Oh, come on and put those blessed hands together. Open up your mouth and begin to give God some praise. Come on and put those hands together. Open up your mouth and begin to bless his name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Our scripture reading today is going to be coming from Philippians, the third chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. Not as though I have already attained, either we're already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doers of his word. Oh, we thank God for you today. Come on, put those hands together one more time and bless his name. Welcome to today's live streaming broadcast. 
We're coming to you live here in the city of Irving, Texas. We want to welcome you to West Irving Church of God in Christ. Our pastor and our leader is Superintendent Andrew Jackson, Jr., our first lady, Lady Sandra G. Jackson. And on behalf of the leadership of West Irving Church of God in Christ, we want to welcome you, our viewing audience. We want to welcome you who here, who are here in live and in person. We thank God for you, the Lord's people. If you are viewing us on YouTube or on Facebook, we ask that you like, comment, and share this experience. We want you to share this experience with your family and friends. Tell them to come on in and see what we're doing over here in the city of Irving, Texas. Again, on behalf of our leadership, our pastor, our first lady, Pastor Superintendent Andrew Jackson, Jr., First Lady Sandra G. Jackson, we welcome you to the West welcome. Irving Church of God in Christ, where Jesus is real. Come on and bless God with us. As we go a little further in today's service, let us receive our praise and worship ensemble. And there's this old song that goes a little something like this. Mm, yeah. Come on, put your hands together. There's a storm now on the ocean, and it's moving this away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Y'all help me sing. Yeah. And it's moving this away. If your soul's not Come up and say, I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. I got my shield and my sword. I got my blood clothes on. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Clap your hands, up your feet. Yes, I praise him. Yes, I praise him. Yes, I praise him. Yes, I praise him. And when the praises go up, what happens is that the blessings come down. So it goes a little something like this. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. Down. 
we've already said it, that when the praises go up, something happens, something happens when we praise Him. Hey, when the praises go up, Come down. The praises. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 After we declare that when the praises go up and the blessings come down, that comes to a place where it's not just about us, that it's about Him. It's all about him. If you can just imagine in heaven, the Bible says that there's 24 elders that fall on their face and declare that he's holy. And so that's what we're gonna declare tonight. You can declare that he is holy. What does it mean for him to be considered holy? That means that there's no blemish in him. That means no fault in him, no failure in him. And so, God, that's what we declare tonight, that you are so holy. You're so holy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are.
Sacrifice of praise. 
Come on, bless him in this house. While you're standing with me today, go to your Bibles. Go to your Bibles. Go to the book of 1 Samuel, if you will. 1 Samuel. And we honor God today. Thank God for Lady Sandra Jackson in the midst with us today. Our first lady. Come on, show us some love. Show us some love. Amen. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 30. I want to read one verse. But I want to expand from that one verse today. We're certainly praying for those who are sick and shut in and praying for those who are suffering from this terrible pandemic, this COVID-19. I mean, I'm hearing cases every day. It's like it's just picking up at all-time pace. I want to encourage you today to stay safe. Amen. Do what you need to do. Uh, take care of your family. Amen. I believe in wearing my mask out in the public. So I'm encouraging you to keep your mask on when you're in public places and certainly continue to wash your hands and stay safe. But God is still in charge, saints. Even in the midst of a pandemic, God is yet in charge. Amen, somebody. And he's doing great things in our lives, whereas we are glad. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God need somebody to take just a few moments and I need you to take your hand and put your hand on your chest, on your breath. I want you to talk to yourself. Say, I'm going to learn how to encourage myself. You need to get a spiritual in-depth preacher's voice and say, I'm going to learn how to encourage myself. You may be seated. I want to talk to you today about learn how to encourage yourself. And that's one of the most difficult things, preachers, that we can even do. At times when we are encouraging other folk and for the prayer warriors who are encouraging and praying for other people, sometimes it's difficult for you to stop and encourage yourself. When you're going through situations and issues, and all of us have gone through and will go through, but every now and then it comes a time in life when you have to stop and there are times when no preacher, no sermon, no prayer, no song on Spotify or YouTube or Instagram will encourage you. There are times you got to stop and encourage yourself. Now we see on the backdrop of this lesson, we see where David took 600 men and they defeated an army of the Amalekites. If you look at chapter 29, they went down and they defeated the Amalekites and David was in conversation with the enemy. And there was a mutual agreement not to kill one of the enemies and they found out that David was really a man of God. Saul has killed his thousand. David has slain his 10,000. They began to praise David for his position as a man of God. The Philistines knew that God had put David to be a, a, a deliverer for the Israelites. And yet, we go to chapter 30 after winning one battle. Chapter 30, David shows up three days later and find out that the enemy, the Amalekites, had taken hostage not only the camp, but all of the family members. David's wives were gone. Matter of fact, I believe at one time, David was out of order and he was not in position. Sometimes you fight the battles that God says are already fought for you. Sometimes we fight battles that are not to be fought. 
And I believe David at one point got the big head. Saul has killed his thousand. David has his 10,000. And he got the big head and figured we can fight anybody. There are some battles you don't need to fight. Consequently, David was out of order. He was not in place. He was not covering his wife. He wasn't covering his family. And when he got back to camp, they realized that the Amalekites, that name kept coming up, the Amalekites. Throughout the Bible, Amalekites with Moses, Joshua, the Amalekites kept popping up. Like an agonizing toothache. <laughs> It'll show up when you least suspect. You can put pain reliever, you can use Tylenol, but if you don't hit the source and take that tooth out, it's going to come up again. There are some Amalekites in your life. They keep showing up every now and then. And you get one victory won, another Amalekite show up. What's an Amalekite? Problem, sickness, disease, mama them, auntie them, cousin them. They keep showing up. Amalekites in your life. Amalekites are simply problems. And the enemy, no matter how he comes, there are Amalekites that trying to subdue and take back what God has destined for you and your family. There are Amalekites that are trying to take you under and subdue you. But God began to speak to David. And David found himself in a place of distress. He found himself throwing his hands up. The one I've led, I've led these people. I've taken them to do battle after battle. Now they want to kill me? Bible says David decided to talk to himself and said David encouraged himself in the Lord. Saints, I came to tell somebody today, not only did David speak to himself, but David spoke to his soul. He spoke to his soul, which encompasses his emotions. It, it encompasses, amen, his feelings. It encompasses even your intellect. There are times you have to stop Working for, waiting on somebody that prays and encourage you and encourage yourself. Who am I talking to today? You've been locked in home. You've been isolated. You've been feeling like you've been going through this by yourself. Look at David. David was fighting the Amalekites. And now he comes and returns. Amen. His men return to Ziglag and find that their wives, their children, their possessions, everything has been taken by the enemy. But look, God told David, he said, get out of there, boy, rise up. I've done for you in the past, amen. You've, you've done great exploits. You took out the giant Goliath. Look, you took out the bear and the lion. Now David finds himself in a place of destitution and distress. Have you ever been in a place of distress? Anybody ever been distressed? Come on, somebody. Feel like your back is against the wall. Look like every time you seem to make an advance toward the front, look like the devil throws you another Amalekite. Come on, somebody. Remember, the Amalekites are simply enemies, enemies of God. They kept showing up. They kept popping up in Moses' days, the Amalekites. The name kept popping up with Joshua, the Amalekites. Amen. They kept showing up. Have you ever felt like there are too many problems in your life that you can't handle? Amen. But you have to stop today and recognize every now and then turn to the mirror and don't look the devil in the eye. We've been looking the devil in the eye too long. Look yourself in the eye. Look in the mirror and say, I'm going to win because greater is he that's on the inside than he that's in the world. You've got to learn how to talk to yourself. But Pastor Jackson, no, I mean, isn't that kind of insane? No. Talk to yourself, even answer yourself. Ain't nothing wrong with talking to yourself. Y'all know the, the, the prodigal son? Amen. He left home. Y'all know the, the backdrop of the prodigal son? Don't need to rehearse that. He found himself out there in the world, left his place of covering, left his place of safety. And sometimes we get into a place, we leave the place where God has purpose for us. We leave the safety ground. He found himself looking outside, looking at the grass on the other side of the fence. It looked green. Found himself an outcast. Amen. A young man that had a rich father. Now he's downtrodden, beaten, 
hungry, dirty, stinky, nasty, at the bottom, amen, of life's life situation. But the Bible says, as he was in the hall pen, come on, somebody, the devil will put you down at the lowest state. He'll put you in the hall pen of life where you feel like nobody cares. You've hit rock bottom. But before he went to the bottom, he came to himself. Who am I talking to today? You got to learn how to come to yourself. You got to learn how to slap yourself across the face and say, thanks, I needed that. You got to learn to look in the mirror and use God's word because thy word have I hidden in my heart. Who am I talking to today? You at the brink of throwing in the towel. You ready to quit. But I came to encourage somebody today. You need to look the mirror, look at the mirror and say, self, I will survive. Self, I will win. Just as David talked to himself. Watch this, watch this. Not only did David just stay there and talk to himself, but David said, I'm going to pursue. I'm going after the enemy. You got to have enough godliness and enough holy boldness in your timid spirit to rise up out of that seat of stupor and get up and say, I'm going to pursue the enemy. I'm going to take back what the devil has taken. The Bible said not only did David go back and win, but they destroyed all of the enemy with just 400 men. Watch this. He had six, but 200 stayed back. God took 400 soldiers and wiped out a whole camp of enemies, and they pursued the enemy, brought back their wives, brought back the possessions, everything they had. God says, go down the zigzag and reclaim and recover everything. Take your hands, I'm going to recover everything. I'm going to recover my dignity. Some of y'all dignity have been squashed during this pandemic. Some of your self-confidence has been put on the back burner. You've been trying to pursue, amen, a personal business. You've been trying to pursue goals in life. And sometimes we get so spiritual-minded, we forget about we got to live. I, I just want to praise God. You need to pay some bills too, dar darling. I, I just want to go to church. You need to work. There are some goals you have in life that the Amalekites have stolen from you. You've had ambition, you've had desires, you've had goals, but because circumstances have knocked you down and chopped your knees off, you are now sitting on a juniper tree with your hand and your head down crying like the prophet. But you need to rise up and say like David, I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord, because if God be for me, who can be against me? Notice something. David began to talk. David began to talk. Talked about his, his people. He says, why art thou cast down? Psalms chapter 42, verse 5. David's in the place. He's writing. He says, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? He began to talk about the people that God had given him. David was a king, and David was also a shepherd. In this term, in chapter 42 of Psalms, the word cast, the word cast down is significant. Watch this. Why art thou cast down? That word cast down is very significant. David was a shepherd. The word cast a cast sheep is one that is unable to get up because his legs are too weak. Why art thou cast down? A sheep that's a cast sheep is a sheep that has an injury and is weak and there's no strength in their legs. And the only way that sheep can be lifted is the shepherd has to lift that sheep up. Why art thou cast down. Who am I speaking? Why are your legs so weak that you can't stand up? Why is it that you don't have the energy and the motivation to rise up? Hey, come on, the Bible says in Proverbs, sluggard, how long shall you sleep? 
rise up out of your sleep. In other words, the devil wants to take your energy. He wants to take your strength. And the very thing that supports you are your legs. Come on, somebody. Without your legs, there is no support. And the devil would take your very legs of support, your very emotions, your very intellect. He'll take your very anointing and he'll cut your legs off and you'll find yourself can't get up. Oh, I'm just struggling. I'm just trying to make it. Look, you need to look in the mirror and say, I'm getting up out of here. Matter of fact, act like you're going somewhere. Get up, wash your face, brush your teeth, get the sleep out of your eyes. Girl, do your hair. Man, put on your suit like you're going somewhere. And look in the mirror and say, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. If God did it for David, God will do it for me. I'm not going to sit here and die in this place. Who am I talking to today? You've been going through hell and high water. Look like you can't seem to find, amen, the ends. Not long them let the ends fit. Sometimes y'all can't, I can't find the ends, Pastor. Y'all keep telling me, hey, amen, find, I can't find the ends. Hey, amen, you can't even borrow water. Out of your faucet, you so broke. <laughs> you can't even buy time. But you got to look in the mirror and say, look, this is just a temporary setback. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Because greater is he. You got to tell the devil and look in the mirror and tell yourself, if God be for me, he's more than the world against me. Look in the mirror and tell yourself, my God shall supply all of my needs. Look in the mirror and tell yourself, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. You got to look in the mirror and encourage yourself. Tell somebody, encourage myself. Oh, this David in Psalms 103, David tells his soul to be blessed. David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. You got to encourage your soul. Amen. Amen. You got to talk. I will bless the Lord. Can you, can you imagine that? You're going through, you still saying, I will bless the Lord. You got a bad news report. The doctor's report was negative. I will bless the Lord. The job shut down. I will bless the Lord. Husband acting funny. Wife acting crazy. Children all in the uprise. I will bless the Lord. See, you've got to learn how in the midst of trouble, learn how to muster up a praise. What do you mean by the preacher? Praise not all. Look at Praise the Bible says is calmly for the upright. In other words, it's a natural inclination. Now, if you don't know the Lord, your first thing will be to cuss somebody out. Bah, bah, bah. But if you, when you got God on your side, your first inclination is, thank you, Jesus. I thank God for the storm. I thank you for the valley. I thank you for the things I've gone through. But through it all, I've learned how to trust and depend on his word. Saints of God, even as David stood up there and began to talk to his camp. And when he encouraged himself, the Bible says they did, they then followed him. As long as he was down in the pity party, pull me down in the valley, valley so low, hang my head over, see the wind blow. I'm in the wrong key, see. As long as he was in the valley of despair, head down between his legs, his folks didn't follow him. But the moment, the Bible says, the moment David encouraged himself, he says the people and the men, what, followed him. There are some folk watching you. They're watching your every mood. You say you're saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, guess what? Your co-worker going to checkmate you. You say you got God on your side and you believe in God. Your co-worker going to see how your attitude is when you're the job and they cut back. They're watching your attitude. If you are saved and you're demonstrating a man, a, a, an attitude of disbelief and, and frustration, they're not going to follow God. But the moment you stand in the midst of a crowd and say, it doesn't matter, saints, what it looks like. Uh, even though the boss said we're going to cut back the hour, you need to tell your co-workers, God will provide. In other words, you're encouraging yourself and you're encouraging somebody else. Uh, and when you learn how to encourage yourself, <laughs> I'm, 
I feel like preaching that you've learned how to encourage yourself. I feel like putting the devil under my feet when you learn how to encourage yourself. I'm like Paul on Mars Hill. He began to preach on Mars Hill. When you begin to encourage yourself, don't worry about what it looks like, but know that God is working on your behalf because if God said he's going to bring it to pass, it will come to pass. I look at David. He began to speak throughout the scriptures. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that exalt in strength. Watch this. You may be weak, but it's something about God. God abolishes every paradox. You can be weak. God eradicates every paradox. You can be weak, but yet I'm strong. Come on, somebody. You can be poor, but yet I'm rich. You can be feeling sick, but yet I'm healed. God does not abide by the status quo. He abolishes every status quo. You may not have enough money in your bank, but if God said it's yours, he'll make the bank account grow. You may not feel good in your body, and the doctor's report said you are sick, but let the weak say I'm strong. Let the sick say I'm healed. You got to learn how to talk to yourself and look the devil in the eye. After you rise up and say, devil, get behind me. Devil, I've got power over you. Devil, get out of my way. I've got victory. Tell somebody, encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. Oh, no, no, no. God bless you, saints. God bless each of you. I pray that you have been blessed today by our morning virtual worship service. And I pray that you took the word of the Lord today and would apply it to your life. Learn how to encourage yourself. When the saints learn the value of encouraging themselves, we can get through many difficulties and many challenging days that we face and will face. I want to pray for those who are watching, your family members, gather around your TV, gather around your iPads, and let's pray together as we petition God for healing of our families, our nation, uh, physical and mental healing, financial healing, spiritual healing, as we endeavor to come through all that we're going through victorious because we know victory is ours. It not shall be, but it's already ours. Let us pray. Father, I thank you now for your grace and mercy toward each of us. Have you blessed us on this service, this virtual service, to yet come before your people in the beauty of holiness? I pray, God, you will save every sinner, every backslider, reclaim those who have walked away, those who are running from the gospel, the Jonas, those who are running from purpose. I pray, God, you would touch them and call them back into the fold and give them a fresh beginning in the name of Jesus. God, save every son of man, every son of woman, boy and girl that's far away from you, have drifted into a far country, have found themselves on the outside looking in. Man, we call you back into fellowship. Woman of God, we call you back to purpose in the name of Jesus. Every young person that's running from your purpose, we call you back into divine purpose in Jesus' name. Then, God, we pray that you will pull families back together, families that are dysfunctional. God, we pray that you will pull them back together, relationships, rebuild, restore, and give them what they need in this time of challenge. God, many have been challenged and don't know how to get out, but I thank God we've learned how to encourage ourselves in the Lord. And we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen and amen again. Well, thank you so much, saints. We appreciate you who have joined us today. And I pray that you will stay tuned for God is up to something in 2022. I told someone on the other day that this is going to be a year of divine increase, the year 2022. Well, it's time to give. I want to give you a chance to be blessed. 
in the ministry of giving. Giving is a part of worship. And as you prepare your hearts, souls, and minds to sow into good ground, I pray that you allow the Lord to speak to your hearts on what to give. Oftentimes, I've stated this, where God guides, he provides. And as you endeavor to sow today, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your spirit man on what to sow today. You can give various ways on your screen. You will see how we can give and support the ministry. The Givelify is one method. Locate the Givelify app and locate West Irving Church of God in Christ. You can give on our website at westirvingchurch.org and follow the donate button. You can also give in the mail. You can mail your donations on the screen. You'll see the address, West Irving Church of God in Christ, P.O. Box 842, Bedford, Texas, 76095. I want to thank each of you for your generosity and your faithfulness in sowing into good ground. We've been challenged over the past several months, but we thank God we have met the challenge and we continually will meet every challenge that we as a body of believers face because greater is he that's on the inside of us than he that's in the world. And the Bible says we can do all things through Christ that's strengthening us. So be prepared today as you sow. Be prepared to receive. I give with a sense of expectancy, knowing that God will give it back. The Bible says, give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, press down, shaken together, running over, shall men do what? Give into your bosom. So I give, expecting God to give it back. Father, thank you for the givers, the sowers, those who are planting into good ground. Give it back to them, God. Bless their homes. Bless their families on their job, give them increase, promotions, open doors that have never been opened before. Only you can do. And I ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen and amen again. Well, saints, our time has come and gone. Again, thank each of you for joining us today on our virtual worship service. Remember, learn how to encourage yourself so you can speak to the enemy, speak to the devil, and walk over him as he's under your feet as you walk in victory. Well, tonight, join us at 6 o'clock p.m. for Sunday night Sunday school for the men and women adult classes tonight at 6 p.m. on Zoom for our men and women Sunday school class. Well, God bless you. Saints, we love you. Sister Jackson and I send you our love with the love of the Lord, and we thank God for each of you. Until we meet again, God bless us with your Holy Spirit of comfort and peace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen again. God bless you. Church of God in Christ.